So we have a situation. Um, PG has recently given us a uh, update or a forum post about a potential update that they want to release. Now it has been a very controversial one. If you haven't seen it, I'll put the link down below in the description. Um, but a lot of people are against it. I have quite a few of my friends who are saying they'll probably quit the game if it comes out. Um, it's it's a pretty dumb update. Some of it is great. There are a couple of things that they're going to change that I think is awesome. And I think it's great for the game. But there's also some things that completely ruin or will completely ruin Atlas. Um, and I don't think it really addresses the main issues with Atlas as is. So what we're going to do in this video, um, is we're going to, we're going to talk about the issues with Atlas as well as my solution or my, my thoughts on a possible solution. And we're going to go in depth with that. So you'll see on the screen, um, some notes that I made and I actually did write notes on a computer in front of me. Okay. So this is like, you know, if I write notes, it's important, okay? Um, so, let me start with issues with Atlas because there are definitely some issues that need to be addressed. The first one is stagnation, meaning that there isn't a whole lot of castle turnover. Tier 4s, Tier 5s, impossible to take pretty much safe Tier 4s or Tier 5s, especially from a team that doesn't want it conquered. So, for example, taking a castle from Dreadnought, not gonna happen. Taking a castle from Fire River, also unlikely. Taking a castle from DC, the Empire, Creed, whatever, unlikely. Meaning that these top diamond teams are just sitting there with the castles. Creating a, a, a situation where that kind of like rolls down the food chain, so to speak, or the chain of tier of players or teams. And there just isn't a whole lot of castle turnover. And there's a couple reasons for that. First one, mega alliances. Mega alliances basically create and basically create a situation where a team can hold on to a castle because they're in alliance with 50 other teams or more who can be rotated through passage sending 100k plus troops over and over and over and over again and if let's say a single 5t is trying to take this castle they can't kill all those troops or it's unlikely they can boom Mega alliances stop conquers. Another issue is diamond teams are preventing conquers. We've had three, uh, my 5TA. One was with um, a particular team, and Dreadnought 5TA themselves brought that team, a Sapphire 3 team, even match for my team, at least through power ranking, right? Like, it may be 200 team rank difference at the time. They brought that team into their 5TA, wiped us out for 100% glory, and then removed them, and basically save that castle from being conquered, right? We had another time. Lethal Descent pulled the team into their 5T8, took the castle from them, so we couldn't conquer it. So you have diamond teams preventing conquers. That's the situation, right? As a Sapphire team, I can't go up against diamond teams reasonably. Sometimes, depends on the diamond team, I can kill off their troops if they're trying to hit me. But I can't conquer a castle from it, Right? So that's the issue. That's part of the reason why it's so stagnant. I mean, conquers are so difficult because you have so many people being babysat by diamond teams that it's just not even worth the troops. The next thing is Dread access. Dreadnought has access to about 3,000 castles. That's a third of the castles in the game accessible by one team. All right. Now, this doesn't affect me as much. But affects DOA teams, right? And I and I speak on DOA and Dread, right? Because realistically, that's what matters. We do have neutral alliances. They don't mean squat. And I don't mean that like in a mean way. I'm just saying, really, the neutral alliances aren't going to... They're not going to be taking a bunch of tier fives anytime soon. All right? That's what I'm saying, right? Um, I, I'm fully for neutral alliances. I think that's what should happen. Uh, I think it should just be a bunch of alliances working in smaller groups, not these huge mega alliances that, uh, you know, are under Dread or NMO uh, or DOA, sorry. But it's not going to happen. It makes it to where a lot of DOA teams don't are, are, are struggling to get safe castles, um, making it to where then they actually have to go out and I don't want to say 
uh, it's basically bully smaller teams to take safe castles next to them so that they can get rid of the ones that are accessible by dread. So that is a big problem. And the other thing is safe passage. And this kind of ties in to the stagnation and the mega alliances, but the fact that you can s continue cycling safe passage over and over and over and over again is an issue because it makes it to where you can have so many teams. You can have like a hundred teams come onto a castle within a period of just a couple minutes. Again, creating the stagnation and creating a situation where you can't conquer castles. And that is the biggest issues. There's also the issue of tier fours. Because if you go around the map, you'll see a ton of tier fours that are completely unowned, right? These are supposed to be almost the top tier of castle as far as bonuses. They, they should be the go after, like what people want. But they aren't because 100% glory. The issue is that there's not enough diamond teams to hold tier fours. Tier fives, there is an issue. There's enough diamond teams to hold tier fives, but tier fours, there is not. So you have a bunch of ones that are just left out in the open. Tier twos and tier threes can be held by platinum teams. Why? Because it's they're not 100%, right? It's a fair playing ground. They can fight platinum teams who are hitting them or sapphire teams, whatever. But on tier fours, all you get are diamond teams, right? Because they're looking for easy glory. And I'm not, I'm not you know, um, criticizing that, I do it too, right? Glory is glory. Um, but very, very few platinum teams, if any, own tier fours. So a bunch of access tier fours and the castles behind them, because then the castles behind them become access after the access doesn't exist. So you have a bunch of tier fours are sitting around, right? That has also created the need for more castles, leading to these top diamond teams bullying little uh, platinum teams to get safer castles, tier threes that are next to them. So again, it's just a cycle. So it's it's just been constant for the last year. The stagnation is crazy. I don't know if a single tier four has actually been taken from a dread team from a D, by a DOA team in a year. So my so, so the solution that I have is this. And I know people are going to be like, "Ooh, he said reset Alice." Oh no. No, hear me out. All right, I, I truly think a reset of Atlas needs to happen. All right, that includes returning all infra, all guards, etc., to storage. Once you reset Atlas, making it to where a, the every team has a maximum of twenty five castles. Right now, PG is implementing a change to where uh, there's a twenty five castle max. Well, the issue is it doesn't really help that much because teams that already have twenty five castles or more, aka Dread. They don't lose them. So they're just going to be sitting there with their 50 tier fives like nothing, you know? So it, it really isn't actually going to do that much because teams that already have it aren't going to be losing it anytime soon. So resetting Atlas and enforcing the 25 castles from the start makes a little bit more sense. Now, there are some issues because people are like, well, we have maxed out infra for 50 castles. So we're going to lose out on all that potential resources that we invested in to our infra so here's what i think okay so all extra infra can be traded in for some sort of bonus for example we have a war dragon central bank right so let's say you get a certain amount of gold back like 90 percent of the gold back used that has been used on infra plus timers and you can take out of the War Dragon Central Bank anytime. So let's say it's during a prune event and let's say you're Dread and you have 25 extra um, infra slots. So you cash in 25 max infra slots and get like, I don't know, 50 billion gold. You can take out that gold during prim events, right? So that way you don't actually technically lose your gold but you actually have, a, you have somewhere that it can be stored. Does that make sense? For timers, um, that would be a little bit more complicated, right? Because sometimes, you know, uh, upgrades are left just to, you know, continue upgrading. Sometimes people in particular will invest like a ton of speed ups. That would be more complicated. But I think the simplest way to do it is like you get 50% of timers back per infra level. So let's say an infra level 
up to 20, I'm making up a number. Let's say to get a bank from level one to 12 is, I don't know, a thousand days, right? You'll get 500 days back to put into the bank or whatever, right? Or maybe it doesn't go into the bank, but it automatically gets transferred once you cash in that infra, it gets transferred to all the players, right? So all 50 players get a like one fiftieth of the timers, right? Again, it's not optimal, but it at least gives something back. And I think that's kind of one of the bigger issues that people have. Um, and what this will do is it'll give teams in DOA, even other Dread teams, access to get more tier fives, more tier fours. Without Dread holding 50 tier fives, that is 25 more tier fives that other teams can hold. Let's say even if the Empire and Creed, all of them only hold tier fives, all of the tier fours that they are currently owning are now available for all the other Dread teams. And all those Dread teams, let's say, all their tier fours, you know, they're, they're filled up to 20 five tier fours, then all their tier threes and lower castles are now available for all the platinum or sapphire teams, right? So it'll open up this huge, like, it's a huge supply of castles. Because realistically, you don't need more than 20 castles. Technically 22, because that way everyone has a governor and baker. But besides that, you don't need it. So it'll give teams the ability to get more castles. It'll also give platinum teams the ability to get more castles. Um, castles are really hard to get. I think that would be good. I truly do. Um, the, the bigger thing, or not the bigger thing, but another thing is making it to where tier fours do not give a hundred percent glory. That again, like I said, there are not enough diamond teams or teams that are capable of fighting off diamond teams. There's not enough of those teams in the game to hold as many tier fours as there are, especially the access which means that they should not be 100% glory. I think if they were to remove that and make it tier fives only, I think that that would make it to where when the reset happened, DOA could have some little pockets of tier fours where the bigger teams could actually hold them and have smaller teams. I don't want to say like meat shields, but smaller teams strategically using the Primarchs, keeping it low troop counts, could keep off teams from hitting them. Making it to where these diamond teams are coordinating more with platinum teams. Also, making it to where Dread themselves cannot hit those platinum. I mean, they can, but it won't be for good glory. And Dread and other diamond, you know, higher diamond teams are not going to hit for 0% glory for a very long time, right? It's not going to happen. Um, you know, they might for a little while, but other teams could support those teams that are holding the access. And all these little lower levels wouldn't give Dread 100% glory. I think that would solve a huge, a huge portion of the issue. Also, to address the um, Mega Alliances, making the cooldown on changing passage, passage 6 to 12 hours. Meaning, you can't cycle through, right? You still have those five teams to help you outside of your own 5TA, but you can't cycle through to a bunch of teams back to back to back to back making it to where there's a lot less support and it's more reliant on strategy and your actual 5TA's ability. And I think really that would help solve the issue with Mega Alliances. And then maximum passage uh, list an uh, individual team can be on to 5 to 10, limiting that number. I don't know what that would look like. Maybe like both teams would have to accept it. Like Dread would have to... Um, uh, would have to like send a request to be on someone's passage and Dread could only be on 10 passage lists at once, making it to where it's not just easy access. You act, they'd actually have to ask for passage in order to hit a team. And this isn't just true for Dread. That's true for a lot of other teams that are on a bunch of different passage lists, but it would make it a little bit harder for them to be everywhere at once or to be able to get access to one third of the map. One of PG's suggestions was to make it basically to where every castle is an accessible castle. And that's why a lot of people want to leave. Um, I'll tell you right now, that will break game. Break the game. That will kill the game. And I really hope PG doesn't consider that. I really hope they don't implement it. Because 
It'll be it'll be the destruction of Alice. And basically the game. Alice is what this game is based on now. So Yeah, that is my suggestions. Um, you know, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. But it got something's gotta change. I mean, if it's not this, I definitely should not be making every castle basically accessible. Um That's just dumb. That's just dumb. I don't know, y'all. So, anyways, I know it's a little bit of a longer video. Hope you guys enjoyed. And, um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, y'all. Oh, by the way, yo, yo, yo.